He's future violin players. Are you ready for the next page? Let's find out what's on it. What? We have Lightly Row and Are You Sleeping? Well, let's see. Let's, um, let me play some A's. So, look at your music for a minute. I'm going to play an A. So, make sure your A is close to mine. Now, here's D. If it's really far off, then... coming up but if it's really far off um, find a friend or oh sorry no C so this one so G and then E but find a friend um, or someone that can help you with this but let's look at these two so we have lightly row and are you sleepy? Lightly row starts out with two sharps and it starts on the A string, ends on the D string, and we know that two sharps is D major. Let's quickly go down and look at are you sleeping? Look at that, two sharps, and we are also in D major. Um, we, um, have one little change on this because there was an error. So when we play through this, you'll understand this. So you have two A's somehow down here in the bottom. Your book will not have that. So ignore that in my music when we play this through. It's actually going to be an E first finger and then an open D. This um, was edited from the cello book, and I think that that got left um, from the cello book and um, hasn't been fixed just yet. So here we go um, on Lightly Row. We'll start here at the top. Um, let's triage this a little because you'll find that this is just like all of the other folk songs. Some of the measures are going to be exactly the same. Well, let's find them first. So we have A, F, F, G E E D E F G. Let's see, is there any place else here where it has? I see A F F G E E, and then we have that little bit of a different measure. It's D F sharp A A, and then down to a D. But if I look at this measure, this measure, this measure, and this measure, the notes are very similar in that this is just A, F, F, hold for half, A, F, F, F. So there's four quarter notes, same notes, but there's four quarter notes. And then this measure and this measure are the same. So some of them are exactly the same and some of them are a little bit of a variation of the measures. So here is similar, the G is similar here, and the A is similar here. Well, the other thing that I can look at this is that this is on the D string and one note on the A string. Just open A and all the other notes are D string notes. This will save you if you will just look at your music before you ever put your bow on the string and go, okay, what's the rhythm? A oh, quarter note half notes and one whole note at the end your brain will auto well, your brain will automatically go okay well that's i can do that that's pretty easy you already have looked at it so your brain is so fast at figuring out then okay i'm gonna hold this note i'm gonna do this one and and then it also if you tell your brain okay there, well, there's only an open a and no other notes on the a string Everything else is going to be on the D string. That helps your brain kind of know ahead of time what it's up for. And you're going to be a faster sight reader. And sight reading in music just means that you have never played it before. And you haven't practiced it. So you're just sitting down, you're looking at the music, and you're going to try and play it through. Um, 
I think um, most people will tell you that your exact level, grade level, if you will, on, on your musical instrument is the same level as what you can sight read at. So if you can sight read this kind of stuff that you're on a beginning level, if you're stumbling with this and you're not quite at that level yet, um, it's, it's a good idea as a string placer, especially classically strained, trained musicians. Um, what you're expected to do as you get farther along is you sit in a group of people, they put music in front of you, and you're expected to just kind of play it. So as you, if your in, in, interest is in becoming a symphony player or a studio musician or those kinds of things, um, ear training is important, but note reading is super important. You're not you're not required to memorize a book to know how to read. Music reading is just like reading a book. Um, you're very fluent if you can just open um, a novel and read it through and not have to look up notes and figure out what the spellings are. The idea with music is that you become the same way. You become a very fluent reader of music. The ear training comes, I think, secondary, and if you learn both together, you become a better note reader. Um, and ear training is is um, a little unusual. Sometimes when you're playing um, with a folks group or whatever, you don't have music and you play by ear and you just kind of figure out a chord that sounds good. And then theory is really important to know. If you know your music theory, you can figure out chords and different things to do. If you know your pentatonic skills, you can almost figure out anything within any key structure. So um, let's do lightly row though. Um, now we know it's A, then F sharp, F sharp, then G, E, E. So you start on the A string. So set up your position, get everything nice and relaxed. One, two, ready, play. A, then F sharp. Then leave second and first down and just put third down. Then open D. F sharp. A, A, and then hold A for two. Now let's go on because we know these notes. All quarter notes. Then G. Now just lift second finger, but your first finger should already be down. And then we have E, four E's. And then the next measure has another E, F sharp, G, then F sharp, four times. Then we repeat the beginning a little bit here. And then open D. Two, three, four. So that what your goal is is to get um, a little faster than that, but to get that so you have no pauses no crunches, no ticking of other strings. Everything is nice and clear and you've got a good tone. Um, I did have to rosin my bow today. So after um, uh, the last video, I noticed in the introduction of the, of the video that my bow was a little slick, so it wasn't actually grabbing the string. Sometimes I don't hear that and you may not hear that either. So make, just make sure you rosin your bow up really well. Now, we're going to go on to a really fancy, um, well, fancy maybe not to you, but it is to me. I remember learning about rounds as a kid and just being fascinated. Um, so each one, part one and part two, plays the same thing, only two measures off. 
Um, this is this is called a round. It can also be called a fugue in music. And um, on Are You Sleeping, you actually can get three parts in, but because we're doing lessons, there's just two parts here. But three people can actually play. So the first person starts here, second person starts here, and if there was a third person, they would start with the same exact notes down here. And it sounds lovely. And it, it always was like, how do they do that? How does a composer know to write those notes and that, that they'll work as a round? Because not all pieces do. Um, one of a very famous one that everyone knows is Pachelbel's Canon is a round or a... Um, or a few, depending upon what word you want to use. Now we have a symbol that we're introducing here, which is called a fermata. And unfortunately, the fermata is down here in our edited spot that hasn't been edited very well, which I apologize that I didn't fix my book before we used it in the videos. But um, the fermata is down there at the end. And that fermata is what it means, um, if you read your words up there, it means that you're going to hold for an extra couple of counts. Um, or if you're in an uh, orchestra where you have a leader, or a chamber orchestra where there's a leader, you're going to look at the leader for the cutoff. And that's called a fermata. Um, so here, let's try this. Let's triage this one like we did with Lightly Row. So we have all D string notes here. Wow. D, E, F sharp, D. Oh, repeats again. D, E, F sharp, D. Then you have F sharp. Looking at the bottom part. F sharp, G, A. F sharp, G, A. Nice. Two, two measures of the same, two measures of the same. Then we have eighth notes. A, open A, B, first finger, A, open G, third finger, second finger, and then open D. Then that measure repeats again. Then we have D and first finger on the G string, then back to D. D, first finger on the G string, back to D. So every measure repeats itself. Now, because this is a round, you then are going to play the exact same thing three times, minus the end measure, which will be an E and a D. Um, when I do the uh, duets with you, I'll, I'll edit that out so we have clean music and whatever um, PDF file that you get, we'll I'll make sure that's fixed in there too. Um, so let's try from here to here. Once we get here, then it, it's three times the same thing over and over again. So let's see if we can just quiet, I don't know, let's try it slowly together. So we have D, E, F sharp, D. Now do that again, because it's the same. Good, and then we're going to go to F sharp. Set your bow because we're doing eighth notes. And then D, first finger on G. some bow exercises but once you put fingers with bows and eighth notes sometimes you'll get sometimes you'll get that sound and it's because your finger and your bow aren't changing at the same time it's really important to go and if you have to like kind of emphasize to emphasize that's fine but make sure that you're changing at the same time that the finger goes down so it goes and not. Um, 
So if you're getting those slurpy sounds or extra little notes, uh, it's only because your bow and your finger are not changing and going down together. So as soon as that A... So now let's move on to the next page. The next page is a little bit of a theory page about time signatures. So we haven't talked a lot about time signatures. I'm going to slide the book over, but we're going to deal a little bit with what this, um, when you see 4-4 four, four in your music, what exactly does that mean? Or what if you see a C or a common time? Or what if you see something else? Like you can have two four, you can have three four, you can have six four, you can have six eight. And what does that do to the, uh, to the patterns of your music? So 4-4, four, four, you know, because we've only been doing 4-4 four, four thus far, gives you four beats, four quarter notes in every measure. So the top one gives you the number of notes in each measure, and the bottom number identifies the kind of note that gets one beat. So we're going to have four quarter notes in each measure in 4-4. Four, four. Now we can also do something where we do eighth notes, um, but we can do eighth note. What if we took 4-4, four, four, which is also called common time. Whenever you see a C in your music, that means 4-4. Four, four. It just means common time. Um, what if we did eighth notes on D, E, F sharp, and D, D, E, F sharp, and D, what if we did common time but did four, we did eighth notes instead, instead. So one measure in common time of eighth notes would become two measures in four, four, because fourth, four over four or common time means that the quarter note gets one beat. So if we make, are you sleeping twice as, Fast. If we slow the beat down, it won't be because you can play this the same tempo as this where you go one, te, two, te, three, te, four, te, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can do it the same so it sounds exactly the same, but it looks very different when you do eighth notes and sixteenth notes. And composers will do different things. Um, we can also play this as a quarter note beat, one, two, three, and this one, one, two. If the quarter note beat remains the same, then this is twice as fast. Then this is one te, two te, three te, four te, one. So it's twice as fast if you stay the same quarter note beat. But if you slow the quarter note beat down, then this can sound exactly like that, but look very differently. Now let's look down here to 2-4. So if 4-4 four, four means four quarter notes per measure, 2-4 means two quarter notes per measure. And look, this is exactly what we have. One, two, one, two, one, two. So we can, it looks very different, but it sounds exactly the same. So I want you to be aware that the time signature can determine what your music looks like. The beat that you set or your mezzo marking, your metronome speed determines how fast you play. So this doesn't have to be fast. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. This can be slow, but it doesn't have to be. You set your quarter note beat at a certain pace, and then all of this music um, surrounds that. But now I want, I want to give you a challenge. So I want you to look in other music that your parents might have or music that you have at home and look and see what kinds of time signatures that you see. And then look at each measure 
and find out what's in that measure. If you see some six eighths, find out if there are six eighth notes in every measure. We're going to talk about all these counting things as we go forward. Um, so have a great week. Um, this is your introduction to page 16, and, and this will be the done and dusted for 17 because it's just to talk about what time signature, signatures mean. Um, and then uh, we'll do one more intro on a couple of duets and then a done and dusted duet recording for the next page. Um, have a great week. Keep practicing and enjoy your day.